I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but without leaving the farm. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome back to another 100 day challenge Stardew Valley video. For the purpose of today's video, we are going to play through 100 in-game days of Stardew Valley, but we cannot leave the farm ever. To make sure that this run is as successful as possible, we need to make sure we select a farm that will give us the resources we need to make some decent money. There is only one goal in this video, that is to make as much money as possible without leaving the farm. So in terms of the farms that we can make here, we're going to go with the hilltop farm because of the fact that this farm provides us with ores. We can use ores for lots of things. The wilderness farm was also something I was going to pick because you can get items from monsters spawning in the farm. The four corners farm is pretty handy for forageable items. And you also had the beach farm as well, where you could get lots of cool items that show up on the beach. But for now, we're going to go with the hilltop farm and we're going to go with the ores. So let's jump straight into this challenge and let's have some fun. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button, help my channel grow, I'd greatly appreciate it. It was day number one on our lovely cozy farm and we start by getting 15 free parsnip seeds. We will plant these parsnip seeds straight into the ground. We're also going to cut down some trees as well and we're going to get as many mixed seeds as possible from the weeds so we can get a good variety of crops grown on the farm. Now we can't leave the farm ever so we can't use Pierre to get different types of crops so we will be reliant on the mixed seeds to get different variety of crops on the farm. So once all this watering is done, and you're going to see a lot of watering in this video because we can't leave the farm to upgrade tools or anything like that. So every single day will unfortunately start with watering crops. Now this farm does have a lot of resources on it. It's got lots of trees, lots of stone, lots of weeds, and it even has ores. So there's a lot we can actually do with the resources it gives. We planted a couple of mixed seeds there. The next day, Willy is teasing us with the fishing rod, but we can't leave the farm so we can't go meet Willy, we can't get the fishing rod. We cannot pull up fish. Now I was actually thinking about spawning in a fishing rod, but I decided not to because I really wanted to challenge myself to see what could I do with just the bare minimum resources that you get on the farm. So the great thing about mining the stone on the farm is that it gives you XP, so it is absolutely possible to level up mining without going to the mines. And level up mining will be super important. There are some recipes that run in the game. I couldn't mine open the big rocks, unfortunately, because you need a copper pickaxe to get at those, but we get all the small ones, no problem. Now, we did reach level 1 foraging there, and foraging is going to come in super handy later on. If we can learn tree fertilizers, it would be nice. The question, though, is can we make tree fertilizers? This could be another thing entirely. Day 3, of course, was the rainy day. The first thing I taught myself today was, oh, I can get some catfish. Then I realized I can't leave the farm. So instead, I was just getting all the resources the farm had to offer, and it was also time to make a chest as well, so I could store some resources in that. I had a lot of stone and a lot of wood accumulated, so I was going to put all this into the chest, and we're going to continue on our merry way in terms of cutting down trees. I got level 1 mine at the end of today, I could make cherry bombs, and cherry bombs, believe it or not, are actually possible to make, because you just need copper ores and coal for those. The next day... A pesky crow got at my lovely valuable crops. Now it just took one parsnip, but it wasn't the end of the world. I had to make a scarecrow to prevent that crow from coming back down and taking my crops, but I needed level 1 farming first to make that happen. It was back to cutting down trees, and this video does get very repetitive very early, just so you know, because there isn't a whole lot you can do on the farm. But it does pick up the pace later on, and it does get quite interesting to see how far we actually get by using the resource that we have on the farm. Today was an absolutely fabulous day. Not only did we get to harvest all of our parsnips, which we can sell for money, we also got level 1 in farming, which means we can now go ahead and make a scarecrow the next day. The rest of the day was spent cutting down our glorious trees. There was a good few trees on the farm, so cutting them all down with a regular axe would be very time consuming. We didn't stop there though. It was also time to put down some seeds to grow some more trees back because sooner or later we were going to get to a stage in this game where there wouldn't be any more trees left on the farm so it was important to get those seeds down as quickly as possible so that we always have something to do each day otherwise it would just be spent in bed and it would make for a boring video <laughs> so day number six we are cutting down more glorious trees so the reason why i haven't farmed all of the weeds on the farm is because they can actually grow and expand and if I leave them grow and expand to a certain extent, I will be able to get a lot of mixed seeds. 
so that will make for interesting gameplay as well. Level 2 foraging means we can make a survival burger, but we won't have the opportunity to make that because we simply can't get the resources to make it. It was time now to get our hands on these lovely ores. As we can see, there was lots of copper ores, there was also geodes, and there was just regular stone as well. Mining all this would come in super handy. Clint visits us the next day because we got our hands on a copper ore. He will give us the schematics for a furnace. The furnace actually comes in super handy, but in order to make a furnace, we were going to need lots of copper ore. So it was going to take us a little bit of time to get the mats ready for that. So onwards and upwards, we are farming more ores today. The great thing about these ores is that they respawn every couple of days. So just because we farm all of these ores today doesn't mean that they're gone forever. Every few days we'll be able to go back to that little plot of land and we'll be able to mine up some more ores, no problem at all. The biggest challenge here was energy. Because we couldn't leave the farm, we couldn't gain access to the other functions that Stardew Valley has to offer. We couldn't get access to fish. So it actually became very hard to keep the energy topped up. So a lot of days it got to a stage where I just didn't have the energy to do anything else. And I was quite reluctant on getting out to site and farming those weeds because I wanted those weeds to grow, especially for summer. I wanted to go into summer with a lot of mixed seeds so I could do really well with the crops in summer. So I wasn't going to plant a whole lot of mixed seeds in spring. I just wanted to save them up to the best of my ability. I was, however, putting down lots of seeds here to make huge tree farms. So that by the time we get into summer, there would be a lot more trees on the farm that I could cut down. I could also sell the wood too for gold. It would be quite interesting to see how much gold we make at the end of the video. But more importantly, I wanted to increase my foraging skill because it just meant less energy consumption every time I swung the axe. That's why it's really important to get the levels up with the professions. So it was back to the ores today and I finally got enough copper ores now to make a furnace. So this would have been the first furnace we're going to make and I just needed five copper ores to make a copper bar. Copper bars are needed to make tappers that we could put on trees later on. I got a few mixed seeds here now from whacking some weeds. It was time to take the hoe out, put some patches down and get those seeds up and running as quickly as possible. You can get some great things from the mixed seeds in this game. Cauliflowers, potatoes, parsnips are all really nice crops that you can plant in the ground and of course sell. Potatoes are super handy too because there's always a chance you can pull up two potatoes which will give you extra money and also extra farming XP. So today, number 12 now, was a rainy day. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull up the lovely catfish, so it was just spent putting down some tree seeds. Day number 13 starts with watering our lovely mixed seeds, cauliflowers, potatoes and parsnips ready to go. It was now time to put some paths down on the farm so I could move around the farm just a little bit faster. I also got out my hoe here and it's always very exciting when you get little artifact spots like that. Now I just got some clay that time, but sometimes you can get something so much better. You could even end up getting a chicken statue. Now of course we couldn't go to Gunther, but at least it would make for a nice decoration somewhere on the farm. Day number 14 yields a nice cauliflower that we can sell and make some handy profit that way. And we start with the usual watering up the crops. Now once all these crops have been watered, the next great task we had to do was to go back and mine up all these ores that the farm had to offer. The ores respawning back were an absolute godsend, especially copper ores because I needed those to make more tappers. And the more tappers I can make, the more money I can make because I'd be able to sell all of the syrups every couple of days. When day 15 came around, once these few crops were watered, the problem then started to occur where there wasn't a whole lot of resources left on the farm. Now leaving the tree stumps on the farm was a great way to get back lots and lots of seeds because the tree stumps will generate seeds every couple of days. The more tree stumps you have on the farm, the more seeds you can actually get. You could plant those seeds back into the ground in other places. You can make really nice tree farms. Now we didn't have tree fertilizers at hand, so we couldn't just pop trees up out of the ground, but those tree farms would come in super handy later on in the game. So today was actually salmonberry day, so I spent a great deal of time today running around getting all of these bushes. And there was actually a nice few bushes in the farm that we got our hands on, except for this bush, of course. I couldn't access that bush. It was very sad indeed. <laughs> day number 17 starts with getting some lovely potatoes. There was a couple of crops left now in the ground. So I was just going to water those. I was going to run around the farm again now and pick up the salmon berries. Salmon berries, of course, are super handy for energy. And you could also sell them as well to make just a little bit of money. The more trees I cut down, the more foraging XP I got. And every time I got a skid up in foraging, more times than not, I would get efficiency with the axe, which meant less energy consumed 
per swing and that's what I was aiming for here ultimately. Not only that, but there wasn't much left to do on the farm except cut down trees, mine open some of the yours that pop back on a daily basis. So Marnie paid us a visit, she wanted to give us a dog here now and you know what? I decided to take the dog for some company because sometimes it get very lonely on the farm because we couldn't actually leave it. So we had to give this dog a name. What on earth were we going to name this dog? So after careful consideration and about one hour of real life, I finally came up with the perfect name for this dog. He was going to be called Only Friend. <laughs> this was the only friend we were going to have on these 100 in-game days of Stardew Valley. Now that our lovely only friend dog was added to the farm, there was a few more things we could do on a daily basis. For example, fill up the dog's bowl with water and pet our lovely dog friend as well. So it was back to cutting down trees. Some trees have fully grown up, which was amazing. I was going to cut those down straight away, get the wood, but more importantly, I was going to get forging XP for these as well. Now, it's not the best way to get forging up, but we didn't have any other choice. All we could do was cut down the trees, get the seeds, put them back into the ground, and rinse and repeat. It was nice to get access to the ores every few days, especially the copper ores. They would constantly respawn. Unfortunately, we had no way of processing those geodes. Now, there is a real nice machine you can get off clean later on in the game, where you can process geodes yourself, but we would have to leave the farm to get access to that pork. Because we couldn't leave the farm, we couldn't get access to the pork. Not to worry though, there was still plenty to do on our lovely farm. For example, cutting down trees to keep us going for 100 days. I can tell you right now that when we get to day 100, I'm going to be a master tree cutter. Level 3 foraging finally rewards us with the tapper. This is an absolute game changer. Not only will we be able to make tappers, but we can put them on all the trees and we can get back syrups, and we can sell the syrups for money. So we pet our dog, cut down more trees, and I had my fingers crossed in the hopes that every morning I woke up, there would be some copper ores just outside waiting for me to harvest so I could make even more tappers. Tappers were fairly cheap to make. The more tappers we could make, the better. So it's putting down more trees here now and the flower dance festival was on today but we couldn't leave the farm to socialize so we had to ignore the fact that the flower dance was on and get back working on the farm our dog was coming in super handy here now getting in the way of putting down seeds i didn't mind because it just meant some social interaction for me the dog only friend was good enough to get out of the way when prompted though it was time to farm more copper ores once these ores were harvested we decided to put them into the furnace because a furnace required an awful amount of copper ores, for the time being I was happy with just the one furnace, because any future copper bars that I got I could put those towards tappers. So it was time to harvest all of this lovely fibre and get these mixed seeds, it was time to start accumulating as many mixed seeds as possible. I just had to be careful not to farm all of the weeds, because then it would take much longer for them to grow back, and the more weeds I left the more they would multiply. So it was a very nice tactic in terms of getting as many mixed seeds as possible. So I decided to sell some things today now and I actually haven't sold anything in a while. So I sold the cauliflowers, the potatoes, the parsnips, I even sold the clay. It was just all sitting in my chest and I said to myself, well this is a money challenge, you know, how much money we can make without leaving the farm. So at the end of spring, or almost at the end of spring, I made almost 2700 gold, which wasn't too bad. I had 3261 gold at the moment. I couldn't do anything with that, but it is nice to see that you can make a little bit of money without leaving the farm. So we were now in summer, getting through the challenge, and it was time to get even more mixed seeds. The more mixed seeds we got now, the better. You can get some great things from the summer mixed seeds, you can even get regrowable crops, so we could make a lot more money now during this season. It was time to hoe up the ground, water the ground, and put down our newly required mixed seeds. So I had a few mixed seeds there now at the moment. And I was hoping for regrowable crops, and because I had the UI Info Suite mod installed, it would actually tell me what crops there were going to be, so I did have some things to look forward to. When I put down the rest of the mixed seeds, I was lucky enough to get a stone owl statue. This is actually quite rare to get, so I was actually very happy to get this, make for a nice decoration on the farm. So day number 30 here now, we begin with watering up some crops. Once these crops were watered, we were going to go back to our regular duties of mining up ores and cutting down trees. There was an earthquake during the night in the 31 and I actually was thinking of leaving the farm and exploring Sergio Valley but the earthquake scared me to the point where I just decided not to leave the farm at all. I decided to play it safe, stay on the farm, don't leave 
I didn't need any help outside of the farm. I had everything here that I needed. I had company. I had crops. I had wood. I had stone. What could I have possibly needed outside of the farm? And then number 33, I managed to get some hay and some wheat. I didn't have any animals, but that was okay. I would just sell those and make some extra profit that way. I watered up the rest of the crops, and I had some hot peppers there. I had some radishes too. It was nice knowing that I had some regrowable crops. So that would go a long way in terms of farming XP and also profit. I was back to cutting down some glorious trees on our lovely summer farm. So I got some hot peppers today. George would be super happy with these. Unfortunately, we couldn't leave the farm and give George hot peppers. So instead, we would just sell them. But Mayor Lewis does come along every single night and collect everything you put into the shipping bin. So maybe they will eventually make their way to George, who knows? I met some tappers today. It was time to put these on some trees and get the ball rolling with some syrups and some resins. So as we can see there, I put them on two different types of trees to get back different types of syrups and resins. It was raining at dinner 35 today, so I managed to get more mixed seeds. I was going to plant those straight away. If I can get more regrowable crops, perfect. And I got really lucky with that one. It was another hot pepper that could be harvested every couple of days. It was time to cut down these trees now that some were grown up. It just meant more wood for me, more sap. I could sell those if I wanted to make even more profits, or I could just keep it and use it to make more tappers and whatnot down the road. Today was a glorious day. I got more hot peppers. Super exciting times. I could even keep these peppers if I wanted and use them for energy, but I decided to just sell them because there wasn't a whole lot to do on the farm and any stones or trees that spawned, it meant for a very exciting day for me. So most of the time I just watered the crops and I went to bed if there was nothing else to do on the farm. I did, however, pet the dog on a daily basis just to accumulate hearts with him. I don't think you can actually accumulate tons of hearts with the dog, but I did feel badly if I didn't pet my lovely only friend on a daily basis. It got to the stage now where I thought to myself, should I keep all of the trees the way they are and try to put tappers on them or should I cut them down? I decided to cut down most of the trees that popped up because copper ore was something that I couldn't reliably farm. I was at the mercy of RNG. Day 39 was only four days left on the corn. Praise Yoba. When the corn does spawn in, that is a regrowable crop. And the great thing about corn is that it also lasts in fall. So I'd be able to capitalize on that easily enough. Three hot peppers today was absolutely amazing. Not doing too bad for day 40, in my humble opinion, of course. I'm not leaving the farm. <laughs> it's going to sell those hot peppers, no problem. I haven't sold anything yet in summer. I will more than likely sell all of these items when I get to the end of the season. Getting more mixed seeds from hoeing spots was absolutely great. It's one great thing about hoeing spots. The fact that you can get them on the farm. You can get clay, you can get artifacts, you can get mixed seeds. Any mixed seeds that I got, I planted them straight away. If I can get corn, absolutely great. That would also last into fall. So I got my very first oak resin today. I would save that because I could try to make a keg later on in the video. If I can get my farming level high enough, I could use the keg then to make some wines. And that would bring in some really nice money too. I was back to cutting down trees today. Because I had so many trees planted in the farm every few days, there was trees that I could cut down just to keep my character ticking over. I got corn today, radishes and hot peppers. It was a great day. All this would be stored in a chest and sold later on. So it was time to water up all these crops. And because there was only a handful of crops there, watering them wasn't so destroying at all. With level two farming, I could make sprinklers. I could also make stone fences and mayonnaise machines. Of course, making mayonnaise machines were absolutely impossible because you need earth crystals for those. The basic sprinklers though, was something I could make if I wanted. However, because I didn't have a huge amount of crops, it wasn't really a priority. And any copper bars I did get would have been much better suited towards tappers instead of any other items that I could make in my crafting inventory. It was back to cutting down even more trees. And as you can see, there's lots of trees now planted on the farm. To get tree fertilizer, we need foraging at level seven. If we can get forage level 7 by the end of this video, I'll be very happy. But chances are we won't be able to get that because it's very hard to get forage level 7 if you're limited to just the resources on your farm. Even if you cut down trees and replant, it does take a considerable amount of time for trees to fully mature. So we were left to watering, mining and cutting down trees as per usual on our lovely cozy farm. 
Getting the hoe in spots was a huge boon, especially if they yielded mixed seeds. Got another oak resin today, and look at all of this lovely fibre that was up on the right hand side of the farm. I decided to cut down most of it, but I left some there so that it would grow and multiply, and within a week or two I could go back there and get, hopefully, even more mixed seeds. Because we always had to think about fall as well, what we could do with the mixed seeds in fall. So I got more hot peppers today. George would be a very happy man if he saw the amount of hot peppers on my farm. I left the mining site for a good few days just to give it a chance to repopulate in terms of copper ores and stone. So I got a lot more copper today, put that into the furnace. That was another copper bar, which means I could make another tapper happy days indeed. Now it was two copper bars per tapper. So making tappers was quite difficult. If it was just one copper bar per tapper, I would have had double the tappers right now in the farm and that would have been really good. So two copper bars was a little bit difficult, but it was a sure way to make some money going forward because tappers work all season round and they guarantee you money every couple of days. So tappers, it's actually a great way to make money because you don't even have to do anything. You just have to put the tapper on the tree and just leave it. So I got some clay today, another chicken statue. That must have been the third or fourth chicken statue I've gotten so far on this run, just from hidden horn spots on the farm. So if you're wondering, all of the lovely certified players out there, how to get your hands on a chicken statue, just run around your farm and hoe like crazy. Chances are you'll pull one up, even if you don't come across an artifact spot, you might just get lucky and just pull one up out of the ground. So it was back to mining today, there was a copper ore there, I got level 3 mining, super happy with that. It just meant less energy consumption for me when I went down to hit those nodes. It was time to make more copper bars, I had 4 more now at this rate made two more tappers i was going to put those on trees straight away but the farm is actually getting to a stage now where i had a good few tappers on trees so i was going to start seeing the money roll in a lot sooner rather than later with level three mining i get one pickaxe proficiency which is really nice and the recipe to make a miner's treat the miner's treat is actually a pretty decent recipe in terms of the magnetism buff that it gives magnetism can be super handy when you're going into caves and you start blowing up nodes left right and center just saves you so much time. We are now halfway through the challenge. We only have 3,261 gold, but we are nearing the end of summer and we have accumulated quite the array of summer crops, especially hot peppers. We've got a lot of hot peppers there that we'll be able to sell. So it will be interesting to see how much we make at the end of the season when we sell all of the accumulated crops that we've pulled up out of the ground. We could even go ahead and sell sap and wood and other things like that as well. And of course, we can sell all of the resins that our tappers have generated. Day number 51, we are cutting down more trees, planting more seeds, and we go to bed straight after because there's nothing else to do on the farm at this stage. <laughs> the next day though, we do get our hands on more lovely summer crops, so we're gonna store up all those in the shade. And we're back to cutting down trees again because what else is there to do? If I just had a copper pickaxe, I could get those larger stone chunks, but we can't need the farm, can't upgrade tools. So we just got to make do with what we have on this farm. Back to watering crops today. And as you can see here now, I'm just speeding up today a little bit because there's only so much footage I can show of cutting down trees. But because of the way the challenge is, there isn't really anything else to do. So primarily for the next, you know, 47 days, it's just more or less cutting down trees, mining open rocks, making tappers, putting them on trees, getting more resins, selling those and getting more money with a few little surprises in some of the nooks and crannies that we do come across. Getting the corn was great, and every time we got more mixed seeds, it did mean potentially more crops like corn, etc., that we could use in fall. Something extremely rare happened today. Lightning struck one of my trees, and it actually fell, destroying the tree that I grew. So I was actually really surprised when I saw that, and it is something that can happen in Stardew Valley. Lightning can actually strike your trees. And here is a great tip for you if lightning strikes a fruit tree, it will for a few days produce coal instead of producing fruit. Now it is super rare, but it is really cool when it happens. I did reach foraging level 5. So I went with the forester pork. It just meant that I get 25% more wood when I cut down trees. So because I was going to get more wood, it meant I was going to get more money. Because when it gets to the end of this challenge, I can just sell all of the excess wood that I have and I can make lots of money that way. Now wood only sells for one gold apiece, but if you have thousands and thousands of wood, that's going to be thousands of gold. So I got back lots of syrups there too that I can sell. And I've got a good few pieces of corn here now, which is great. These will also last into fall. So I'm going to get a lot more money this way as well. 
it's going to be very interesting to see how much money I can make at the end of the year. If I can make over 100,000 gold, I'll be super happy. So that's kind of the goal I've set now at the moment. So here is the moment of truth. I'm going to sell a huge amount of items now today that I've stocked up inside the chest, including artifacts, wood that I just don't need. I've got stacks of wood inside of a chest there. That's all been sold as well. Let's see how much money we're going to get around the last day of summer now. Got two more oak resins there. So in total, we made 10,323 gold. That was actually much better than what we made in spring. We're now in fall. The corn is good to go. We will try our best to plant a lot more mixed seeds to see if we get a lot more crops. If we can get rid of global crops, it'll be absolutely amazing. So we're going to go back down here to this little area where the weeds are. We're going to start sighting those up. I got back more mixed seeds now today. Eight in total, which was great. I'm going to plant these, hoe up the ground, and I'm going to cross my fingers for regrowable crops. That's the best way on a farm like this, on a challenge like this, to make tons of money. The great thing about doing it this way is that I only have to water a few crops every single day, so I still have a great deal of energy left when it comes to cutting down trees and mining up ores. I now have a total of 13,584 gold. Let's see how much money we'll have when we get to the end of all. So I got some cookies there in the mail. They're actually pretty sweet. And I was trying to decide if I should eat those for energy or if I could just sell them. I decided to just sell them because in the long run, I was going to have the whole season to cut down all the trees on the farm again, you know? And most of the trees that were grown now would hopefully get tappers in the next couple of weeks. So I had more copper bars now. Today, it was time to make another tapper and put that onto a tree. Oh, such exciting times. I'm hoping to make at least 20 to 30,000 gold by the end of this season and then just whack it out of the park then for the rest of winter to get to the 100,000 gold mark. So I got level 3 farming today, plus 1 hoe proficiency, plus 1 watering can proficiency, very important. But also the bee house, speed grown farmers under very nice too. More importantly, the bee house. Now in order for us to make a bee house, we need wood, coal, iron and maple syrup. The challenge there now would have been iron. And as far as I was concerned, I wasn't going to be getting my hands on iron for the rest of this challenge, unless I started spawning on the farm there. But for now, I was just getting copper nodes. But if iron did spawn, I could actually press for a bee house. And if I could get a bee house down in fall, I could get honey and sell it for extra profit. But I'd have to see as the days go by if I would get iron or not. So it was back to cutting down trees, planting seeds and mining up the ores. Got a pine tar today, that will go into the chest to be selling that later on. Cutting down more trees, the usual story. More and more trees were grown, which is really good. More trees popping out of the ground. More wood for me, more sap for me. I got some more mixed seeds today. Very excited for that. And that was going to be corn and artichoke. Once I finished watering all the crops, it was just back to cutting down more trees again because we didn't really have anything else to do. But what was going to be very interesting to see is how much money we are going to have at the end of fall. And our crop patch was, slowly but surely, getting that little bit bigger. The more regrowable crops we can accumulate, the better in the long run. We're now on day number 61. And it begins by watering crops. And I know at this stage I sound like a broken record player, but you're going to be hearing that a lot more times. Otherwise, there'd be no need for the voiceover for this video, because there wasn't much else to do on the farm. So I also got some more mixed seeds here now and we're going to plant these as per usual. Let's hope we're going to get some really growable crops. So we got some artichokes there. Oh, we got some eggplants as well though and that's really nice because eggplants are a regrowable really crop. The next day was a rainy day. That means I didn't have to water the crops which is great so I was able to save in some energy there now as well. So I decided to cut down even some more trees because what else was there to do? The next day, I was able to harvest even more crops. Look at all this lovely corn that I was getting. Five pieces of corn in total. Absolutely amazing. I just got two oak resins there, and it's finally time for the blackberries to pop up on these fabulous bushes. So we were now in blackberry season. That means bushes all over the farm would have blackberries on them. So I spent a day running around getting all the blackberry bushes. I also got some maple syrups there too. And we are back to cutting down trees. The story of our lives. I suppose this should have been 100 days as a lumberjack instead of 100 days without leaving the farm. <laughs> Thankfully, the next day, day number 64, the copper ores respawned. I was hoping for 10 copper ores in total here. That's two copper bars. That is another tapper for us. 
So I managed to get enough copper ores here now to make more copper bars. Thank God I could now make more tappers and put them on some trees. The next day was more blackberry bushes, which was great. A nice tip actually for blackberry bushes. Now we don't utilize it on this challenge here, but if you do get a salmonberry season or a blackberry season, reset your game on the first day. And when you log back in, a lot more bushes will have populated with berries meaning a lot more energy for you and a lot more profit for you if you wish to sell it. Now cutting down all these trees, it wasn't as bad as you think it was because I was getting foraging XP every time I cut these trees down and I was already on level 5 foraging. If I can push this foraging skill up to level 7, I could attempt to make tree fertilizers. Now all you need to make tree fertilizers are fiber and stone. That is basically it. It is a very simple item to make. It's also a very overpowered item because it means your trees grow up very quickly. It also enables the growth of your trees in winter. So if we can get level seven of foraging before winter comes in, we'll be in a very good place to make some money in winter. Otherwise, we're gonna run out of things to do very quickly. So we're on day 67 now, it's got a maple syrup there, and there's more blackberry bushes to be had, which is really nice. All of these blackberries, of course, will be sold they don't sell for a whole lot of money on their own, but when you have hundreds of them, you do get back a few bob that will make the difference at the end of the challenge. So at the moment we have 13,584 gold. If I can get 50,000 gold before this season is out, absolutely amazing. And you might think to yourself that that may not happen. But if you look at all the corn that we have collected so far, along with the other crops, along with other bits and pieces that we've hauled up out of the farm, all the syrups we've been collecting, it does accumulate over a period of 28 days and it will be very interesting to see how much money we get setting all that in bulk. So we're just back to watering crops here now and we're almost halfway through fall. The days are going pretty quickly because there's only so many things we can do each day. I did however get a second wind at this stage of the playthrough because I knew I was getting close to completing the challenge and I was very excited to see how much money I was going to get when I got to day 100. So I got two pumpkins now today and they were the first pumpkins that we're going to get. Pumpkins sell for a decent amount of money. Unfortunately, I didn't have the means to make a keg or a preserve jar. If I could make one of those, I would have got a lot more bang for my buck, especially with the pumpkins, because pumpkins are one of the best things in the game that you can process to make extra money. Those along with starfruit, of course. So it was back to getting resins now today and pine tars, which is really nice. Our dog only friend <laughs> was also super happy. We were also petting him on daily occasion. We're getting more corn out today. I have to say the corn was really paying off. It's probably one of the better items you can get from mixed seed because it lasts through two full seasons. You'll also notice too, if you just look up a little bit, you'll see a mushroom tree. And if we put a tapper on that, instead of that creating resins, it actually start popping out mushrooms. There even, there's even a chance it can pop out a purple mushroom. Now it is quite rare, but there's a chance it can give you a purple mushroom, which is really nice when it happens. So that is our first mushroom tree, and it is actually quite rare to get that. If you're unfortunate enough to not get these in the base game, you can actually get mushroom seeds inside Key Secret Walnut Room if you wanted to have a big mushroom tree farm. At the moment, two rare events have happened to us in this video. The first one was lightning striking one of our trees, which is pretty cool. The second was one of our trees turning into a mushroom tree. So the more trees you have in fall, the higher chance you have of one of them turning them into a mushroom tree. And the reason why you should try to get as many mushroom trees as possible is the fact that they can give you purple and red mushrooms if you attach a tapper onto the tree, which is actually really nice. Now, purple mushrooms are extremely rare, but can happen. And the more mushroom trees you accumulate, the higher chance you have of getting purple mushrooms. And purple mushrooms are a really nice item to have where they can sell for lots of money, they can also give you lots of health and energy as well. So it's definitely worth your time investing in mushroom trees if you're lucky enough to get them. If you're not lucky enough to get them in fall, you can always just go to Key's secret walnut room on Ginger Island and buy mushroom seeds there. So we just got to level up foraging, let's have a six foraging, one level to go and we can make tree fertilizer. So we can make the lightning rod, fall wild seeds and the beach warp totem. All of these items, of course, aren't that good to us because we have no way of making them at the moment. Getting the red mushroom every single day off that mushroom tapper is very fortunate for us. It just means a lot more money to be had at the end of fall. It's also worth noting too that the tapper won't work in winter 
And while we're in fall, the tarpa will work every single day, but in any other, the other two seasons, so in spring and summer, you have to wait two days for the tarpa to give you back something. Level four farming rewards us with a preserved jar. Now this was very exciting, and I do try to attempt to make a preserved jar, but the materials for it are a little bit tough. You need wood, stone, and coal to make a preserved jar. Eight pieces of coal in total, and you might think to yourself, that's not a whole lot of coal. It actually is. Coal is a resource that isn't given to you in huge amounts unless you're in the mid to end game and you're set up to farm coal. Other than that, you're always going to find yourself not having huge amounts of coal. So I was able to make four preserved jars. We're going to use those to process all different manner of items into artisan goods so we can sell those for even more money. Got more med preserves today and I got the red mushroom as well. There's also a chance it can give us a common mushroom too. So it's a red mushroom, a common mushroom and of course the rare and exotic purple mushroom. We're putting more copper ores into our furnace today. That's going to get us back copper bar. That means we can make another tapper. And we're going to put that on our second mushroom tree. And that one has yielded a purple mushroom. So we got super lucky today. We got one purple mushroom and one red mushroom. So we're going to get a lot more money for that. It also increases the odds that we're going to make a lot more money at the end of the season. Because those mushrooms are spawning in every day. And they're going to sell for lots of money once they fully accumulate. There's still a good few days left in fall. So there's still a chance that other trees that we do have will turn into mushroom trees. So we got some pickled pumpkins back today. Now we're going to put corn into these preserved jars. Just to get more money out of the corn. Because we have lots of corn there that has been accumulated. Which is really nice. We're still on two mushroom trees. But I do walk around the farm every single day. Looking to see if any other trees have converted into mushroom trees. Because if they have, it just means... A much bigger profit for me because we're going to get mushrooms every single day. We're now on day 79. We're almost finished the challenge. It's going to be very interesting to see how much money we're going to get at the end of the 100 days. People have also mentioned, you know, if I do 112 days to complete the whole year. Now, you won't see that in this video, but going forward in future Stardew Valley videos, that's something you might actually see. You might actually see 112 days of gameplay instead of 100 days. But let me know in the comments if you would prefer that framework and I can slightly adjust to that no problem at all. Also please leave a comment in this video if there's any 100 day challenges you would like me to do. I greatly appreciate the comments. So I got more pickled corn today. I'm going to sell all that now to make an even better profit. I've got over 30 pieces of corn in my inventory. The more corn I can convert to pickled corn, the more money I can get. We're now on the 25th of fall, day number 81. We're almost finished fall. We're going to be going into winter. Winter is going to pose some serious challenges because the trees are going to stop growing because we haven't hit level 7 foraging. We're about halfway there at the moment. I don't think I'm going to get level 7 before winter, but it is going to be a close call. So if I do see trees, I will cut them down immediately to get more foraging XP. Getting the red mushrooms every single day is an absolute game changer. It does mean I'm going to get a lot more money at the end of the season. And we will find out now in the next few minutes how much money that we're actually going to get. So I went back down to the mining site here on the farm. I got some coal out of the ground. That was actually really nice. If I can accumulate 8 more pieces of coal, I could make more preserved jars, increasing the profit that I get by the end of the season. We're now on the last day of fall. And I was fortunate enough to get all of the corn harvests before winter kicks in. That was nine pieces of corn in total, which was really nice. I can try to convert that all into pickled corn, no problem at all. There are the last red mushrooms I'm going to get, and there's a nice oak resin there as well. So we're now going to sell all of the items that we have accumulated for this season. And even if an item is only worth a single gold piece, we will absolutely sell it because it all counts towards the end. As you can see there, we had loads of blackberries, we had loads of mushrooms. Let's see how much money we're going to make. I'm at 11,430 gold. I was hoping I'd make a lot more money than this. And I'm only up on 25,000 gold now. So I don't know if I'm actually going to get 100,000 gold in the next 16 days. But it will be interesting to see how much money we do make from just living on the farm. As you can see here now, I'm selling a lot more items in winter that I don't really need. Such as sap, etc. I'm at a total of 6,444 gold that day. Demetrius finally visits us because we meet the gold threshold. It's going to be an absolute no-brainer to tell Demetrius to set us up at the mushroom cave 
because we're going to get six fresh mushrooms every single day. So we're going to go with the mushroom cave straight away. This will make a huge difference in terms of how much money we're going to make at the end of the season. So I decided not to sell all of the corn. Instead, I'm just going to keep processing it into pickled corn because I make more money that way. Because we were in winter and because I didn't have tree fertilizer, all of these seeds, all of these trees would not grow in the ground. So it was time to do a little bit of a restructure here. So I was going to put the tree sappers off the mushroom trees, put them on the regular trees here because they won't generate mushrooms anymore now because it's winter. So that was six fresh mushrooms we got today. We got the moral, we got the chanterelle. They will sell for nice money indeed. But common mushrooms are also okay. Red mushrooms are okay. But the chanterelle is really good. If we can get purple mushrooms, that'll be a huge bonus as well. And we can go into that cave every single day and get new mushrooms. And a common mushroom, as per its name, is very common. So you're going to get that most of the time. But there's always room to get the other mushroom types. No problem at all. We're also back to farming the ores here now so we're getting more geodes we're getting more copper ores we're getting more stone if we can make more tappers we will absolutely make them so i just have enough copper ores here now to make another copper bar i can make two copper bars in total which means i can make another tapper and i'll put that onto a tree we're now on day number 88 there's only 12 days to go it's going to be very interesting to see how much money we've made in the whole year by just sticking it to the resources that are on the farm. As we can see, I've got a nice little tree farm over here now, beside the greenhouse, all set up with tappers. So I was getting more pickled corn today. Our lovely dog friend, only friend, is asleep. <laughs> we're gonna let him be. And we're gonna continue processing our corn into pickled corn and going into the mushroom cave to get all of our lovely daily mushrooms. Red mushrooms, common mushrooms, and morals were all on the list to be picked up. So I got a home spot here, it was just more clay. And normally clay is very valuable, but because we are just stuck to the farm, you know, it was, wasn't great. Of course, I could have done a clay farming, but I felt that would have been cheating, so I didn't do clay farming at all. Because it was winter, it did present an opportunity other seasons do not present, and that is getting forageables from hoeing. So there is a chance we can get the snow yam or the winter root from hitting hoeing spots on the farm. Now, I got a purple mushroom today. I was super happy with that. The maple syrups and the oak resins, of course, are all welcome. So as you can see, we're not doing much now on a daily basis because the trees aren't grown. We can only primarily just mine the rocks, check to see what we have in Demetrius' cave and get other bits and bobs as well as pet our lovely dog friend. Only friend. <laughs> he is our only friend on this lonely, lonely farm. But you know what? You reap what you sow and I did choose loneliness. Another hoeing spot today yielded a snow yam. I was actually very happy with that. The tappers didn't have anything to offer, so it was straight into Demetrius' mushroom cave, and this cave was just saving the day, because there was nothing else to do on the farm except harvest the cave every single day. I couldn't really cut down the trees. The next day, I got some oak resins, which was nice, and you guessed it, it was back into the cave for more stuff. I did take the usual walk around the whole farm to see if there was any goodies around, such as harvesting points, or even nodes, copper ores, etc. so I could get more tappers. I was also processing the corn into pickled corn. I was getting through that quite well. So I was going to have lots of pickled corn to sell now when we finally get to day 100. Got more purple mushrooms today, Mars common mushrooms. It was all going really well actually. And I've been accumulating a lot of mushrooms. It's time to make more pats here because I had nothing else to be doing it myself. So I said I have a lot of wood. Why not just make some pats around the farm? So I can just get around that a little bit quicker, as if I was stuck for time. <laughs> but you do get the privilege in seeing my mastery of putting down pats. As you can see, it's in a totally different league. Another chicken statue today. I've actually lost count with the amount of chicken statues I've gotten from this run. They are so, so common. So here is the master tip for you today. If you need a chicken statue for Gunther, just run around your farm and try to find home spots. You will get one eventually. I got level 4 mining today. That was really um, exciting. I could now transmute iron bars. And I could make the glowstone ring. So happy days. Back into the mushroom cave today. It was 6 fabulous common mushrooms. That was day number 96. Didn't do anything else for the day. I was just running around the farm looking for home spots. Did convert some corn into pickled corn though. And that was the last of the corn. It was now time to make more preserved jars, two more preserved jars in total, just to speed up production on other items that we can process. 
So I decided to put these inside the house since I had a little bit more space inside here. It was now day number 98. We were almost finished the challenge. So I was actually getting really excited now at this stage. Had no idea at the time how much money I was going to make. So I was just dumping all the stuff into the chest that I had. And I wasn't going to sell it all until day 100. Got some more hone spots today. Got a warp totem to the beach, which was nice. Unfortunately, the warp totems don't sell for a whole lot of money. If I had a deconstructor though, I could have got some really good stuff back for those. But alas, we couldn't leave the farm so we couldn't get any items like that. Back into the lovely mushroom cave to get more mushrooms. I know I sound like an awful broken record player, but the voiceover for this video was very challenging because I was extremely limited to just a few actions for the whole 100 days. And those actions were cutting down trees, mining ores, and just harvesting tappers. <laughs> But I did have a lot of fun making this challenge and I was able to do this in just a week because of the way the challenge was, there wasn't a whole lot to do each day. So it was a nice easy challenge but it was also a very interesting challenge. And what's going to be very interesting now on day 100 is to find out how much gold we're going to make by playing 100 in-game days without leaving the farm. Not even going to events or not even allowing us to go to pier for one day out of the year. So I know some people implement routes like that, but I need to keep it strict on these runs. So on day 100, I decided to get all of the resources the farm had to offer. This included all the stone, all of the copper, all of the wood, all of the weeds. Everything that was on the farm was going to be sold. I took great pleasure in taking all of the items out of the chest and putting them into the shipping bin, knowing that I was on the final day and I was finished the challenge. I had lots of corn left. If I made more preserved jars, I could have made a lot more money because I could have processed a lot more corn. But other than that, there was a lot of items here to be sold. It was going to be very interesting to see how much money I was going to make from all this. Let's see what the final figure is. So for winter, I made 23,362 gold. Not bad at all. Let's see if this can at least put me over 50,000 gold within the first 100 in-game days. And it did. I made a total of 55,000 320 gold total earnings 54,820 gold so it was a really nice challenge to do i was really happy with the outcome i was aiming for 100,000 but i suppose we can just we can just do it what the farm gives us so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it thanks a million for your support have a great week and i'll see you in the next video bye for now